I dreamed of a city called glory so bright and so fair when I entered the gate I cried holy the angels all met me I saw but I said I want to see Jesus he's the one who died for all then I bowed on my knees and cried holy 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 I clapped my hands and sang glory Son of God. I thought as I entered that city, my friends all knew me well. They showed me the streets of heaven. Such scenes are too numerous to tell. I saw Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mark, Luke, and Timothy, but I said, I want to see Jesus, he's the one who died for me, and I bowed on my knees and cried holy. sang glory, glory to the Son of God. Then I bowed on my knees and cried, Holy, Holy, Holy. I clapped my hands and sang glory, glory to the Son. Hello, and welcome to Prescott United Methodist Church live streaming worship. We're glad that you've come to worship with us today and join with us uh, over the internet. A couple of uh, announcements to lift up for you today. Uh, on this coming Friday, the 24th at five o'clock, our new associate pastor, the Reverend Efrain Zavala, will host a Get to Know Me on Facebook Live. He'll be using the church's uh, Prescott United Methodist Church Facebook, and he's asking that you would um, submit your questions uh, to him uh, beforehand via his email, which is, um, I've forgotten your email. Okay, Ephraim, so it's E-F-R-A-I-N at prescottumc.com. Did I get that right? Got that right, okay. So uh, submit a question before Friday the 24th at five o'clock and then join him, uh, his wife Michelle, and their daughter Michaela on uh, Facebook Live to have a, a live chat. Um, also uh, coming up right around the corner is our annual Shoes from the Shepherd event. We're not exactly sure how that's gonna take place this year. We've got a couple different options for that. And uh, part of it depends on when exactly the school's going to be in person. So uh, just stay posted. We know that you're all curious about that and uh, pray that we make the right decisions to do the most good for our community. Again, we're glad that you've come to worship with us today for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please join us in the call to worship. When we look at the world around us, it is easy to get discouraged. We see sickness, conflict, and unrest. 
the whole creation groans in labor pains. Yet we know we are your children. We hold on to hope. Something new is emerging. The redemption of our bodies, a new heaven and a new earth. We wait for it in patience, trusting always in your unending love. Together, Together we, we cry, cry Abba, Abba, Father, Father May your spirit lead us forward. May we find our rest in you. Please join in our opening hymn for the beauty of the earth. Hello, children of God, and hello, Michaela. Thank you for joining with me on the steps today. I'm wondering, have you ever played the game called Follow the Leader? Yes. How does that go? So whoever wants to be the leader gets to be the leader, and whatever they do, the other people need to do what the leader does. Okay. Is that a fun game? Yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking of... Just in everyday life, are there people that we follow? Hmm. How about your mom and dad? Do you do what they tell you to do? Yes. Mo because... Most of the time? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm thinking your mom and dad are probably good people to follow because they follow somebody else. Can you guess who they might follow? Their own parents. Well, their own parents, but I'm thinking even more important, they follow Jesus. Yeah. They do the things that Jesus says that we should do, and they're the people that Jesus says we should be. In today's Bible verse, it says that we should follow the Spirit. The Spirit is also part of God. So we listen to that voice of God that speaks in our hearts, and we follow it just like we follow the leader. Can you remember that? Can you follow the Spirit just like you follow the leader? Okay, let's pray together and repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, Thank you, Thank you, For your spirit, For your spirit, May we always, May we always, Follow, Follow, Your lead, Your lead, Amen. Amen. Michaela, thanks for your help today and thank you for listening. Lord of all creation 
the heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high, God of wonders beyond our galaxy. now to our time of prayer and we begin with prayers of thanksgiving for the this week the past week we celebrated a birthday with Bob Severy and several anniversaries Dick and Lynn Maston Dave and Kay Keeley and Jean and Nancy Schaefer and so we celebrate with all of them. There's also a very special birthday coming up next week, and that is Michaela Zavala, 
will turn seven years old. So we celebrate with Michaela and we'll, we'll celebrate again next week. For the Zavala family, remember on Friday the 24th, next Friday, go to Facebook uh, at five o'clock, the church Facebook page, and Pastor Ephraim and his family will be introducing themselves and answering questions. He'll talk more about it during his message in the service today, but five o'clock Friday on Facebook. We ask for travel mercies for those who will be going to the Navajo Nation next week. They will deliver the supplies that we've collected and so we keep them in our prayers as well as all the citizens of the Navajo Nation. So let's come together now for our time of corporate prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we give thanks for this day and for this time together and for your presence here. May we follow your Spirit's guidance and in the week ahead, seek always to walk the path of discipleship. As we gather in your name, gracious God, help us to remember that this day is holy, that this is Sabbath, a time with you, a time set aside, a time for rest. Today, Holy God, we hold up the prayer concerns and thanksgivings that have been shared aloud throughout this week. And we know that you hear also those prayers that are held quietly in each of our hearts. We pray for those who are lonely and alone those who are ill, those who are grieving. We pray for restoration and wholeness. Surround each one with your healing arms of comfort and peace. We lift up and hold close the teachers, staff, and students of our Arizona schools. We lift up the health care providers, nurses, and doctors, aides and techs, housekeepers and maintenance staff, all who provide for the health and safety of those who are ill. We pray for first responders, for firefighters and police, for EMTs and paramedics. Watch over them all, O oh God, walk with them and surround them with your protective love. Keep them safe and in your care. We know, O oh God, that at a future time we will be together again in person, but until that time, give us patience. Help us to remember that we are still the church. Open our hearts to your spirit and your presence. Hear us now. Gracious God, as we pray together the prayer of our Lord, the prayer that Jesus taught, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear now these words from Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning with the 12th verse. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not in the flesh, to live according to the flesh. But if you live according to the flesh, you will die. 
But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The Word of God for the people of God. Hi, friends. Uh, my name is Pastor Efrain Zavala, and I'm very happy to be with you today sharing the message. I'm also getting, uh, looking forward to meeting you all in person at some point. In the meantime, uh, don't forget to join us next Friday at 5 for our Facebook Live. Uh, send me your questions. We'll try to get to as many as we can in that amount of time. Uh, Today I want to start by telling you a little bit about my family, more specifically about Michaela, our six-year-old daughter. We have been teaching her uh, quite a few things, but there's one thing that we find very important that she learns, and that is the management of her money. So we've uh, given her a, she's got a little baggie now in a, the shape of a heart where she keeps change. And uh, that's her money. She can do whatever she wants with it. And uh, she's learning about the importance of saving money. She's learning about uh, spending money and just taking care of all those resources. Well, it happened a few weeks ago. We were still in Tucson. We hadn't moved to Prescott yet, uh, where a lady came knocking on our door selling tamales. And... Uh, uh, you know, we, we love Mexican food, so we decided we would buy some tamales. Uh, the problem was I was $5 short. So I kind of, uh, I got a little sad, but Michaela, she stepped up. And she said, you know what, you know, Dad, I, I, I have my little bag with money, so you can borrow the $5 if you want to. So she saved the day. I borrowed the $5. We got the tamales that we wanted. We were very happy. Well, uh, mom, moments later, even before we started eating the, the tamales, uh, Michaela made sure I remembered, Dad, don't forget to get those $5 back to me at some point. And I knew then that I had made a mistake. Um, but that's important. That's important for her to know. That's important for us to know that we have obligations. And not everybody has uh, Michaela. Uh, in, her, in, in their lives, reminding them of the things that they have to keep in mind. 
But today we get to, to read a little bit of uh, the letter that Paul writes to the Romans. And he, in a way, reminds us that we have certain obligations as Christians. He begins the passage by saying, we are debtors, which is an interesting way of saying we have obligations. We have obligations to God. We have obligations to other people. We even have an obligation to creation. Um, we all, in a way, have a debt that we must remember. All of us children of God. Sometimes we like to think of ourselves as pretty independent people. We forget that our actions can have quite the impact on the lives of other people. We even learn this at church sometimes. I know that when I was growing up, the message that I kept hearing uh, over and over was the importance of me having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now that's a great message, except I think that's an incomplete message. Because yes, we have a personal relationship with Jesus, but it so happens that when we have that relationship, Jesus invites us to welcome other people as well. And so our personal relationship becomes a communal relationship. Our relationship with God goes way beyond just the two of us. And so Paul kind of hints at, at this when he says, for all who are led by the Spirit are children of God. You see, friends, we are all part of one big family. We're all God's children. And we have an obligation to each other. We are reminded of this at this time, particularly as we uh, deal with, with, uh, with COVID-19. We are become, we've, we've become increasingly aware of the impact that our actions can have on the lives of other people. And we've come to understand that uh, we are very fragile as human beings. Many of us wear a mask when we are in public, and we understand that we do this not just for our own sake, but for the sake of others, for other people's health, people we may not even know. We want them to do well, we want them to be healthy, because we live in community, and our decisions have an impact. And for this reason, we have an obligation we are debtors. And friends, we also have an obligation to our planet. What does this mean? Well, just like our actions impact the lives of other people, the actions that we, our, our actions also impact the world around us. Our coming home. You know, historically, we have not done a very good job at caring for our planet. And increasingly, we are seeing the consequences of our actions in that regard. Conversations like uh, climate change, the destruction of ecosystems are very common. And we need to understand that we are at a crucial time in our history. <clears throat> Paul understood that he was at a crucial time in his history. He stated, we know, we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. Friends, the pain is real. The harm is real. And part of making a change is understanding our role in that process. Theologian Leonardo Boff recently wrote an article making that connection between our actions, our spiritual life, and the world around us. <clears throat> he said, our love for life, the wisdom of all people, 
and the need for care have never been so urgent. <clears throat> Buff believes this virus is one of the ways in which the earth is constantly reminding us how much we owe her. We are debtors. Indeed, we have an obligation and we understand that our actions, every action we take uh, in, this, in this aspect is a two-way street. We care for our world and our world cares for us. Friends, just to understand this process requires humility on our part. Humility is such an important part of who we are as Christians. My favorite definition of humility um, is this, is that it's not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Because when we think of ourselves less, we give ourselves the opportunity to think about the needs of other people to think about the urgency of care, of connection, of communion with our brothers and our sisters. <clears throat> so yes, we need to be humble. And we need to understand that we have obligations. as we confront this very uh, difficult reality that we are facing. Now, Paul encourages his audience to consider another reality, and I have to confess this is a little challenging for me. The Apostle Paul reminds us of the importance of hope. He invites us to embrace hope, and he says that we are saved in hope. He says there's a new reality in front of us, ahead of us. He says our bodies will be redeemed. He says the whole creation will be set free from its bondage to decay and that we will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Something new is emerging. Paul says we are waiting for something that we cannot yet see. And this is difficult for me. I like seeing things. I like to know what I'm getting myself into. And sometimes when I hear conversations about hope, what I hear is uh, our conversations about passivity. Just kind of waiting to see what happens. But friends, I don't believe that this is what uh, Paul is talking about. I believe hope is a way of life. I believe it moves us to action. It is not a matter of passively waiting for something to happen. You see, if I truly believe in this new reality, if I truly believe in the redemption of our bodies, and if I truly believe that creation will be set free from its bondage of decay, then I need to live accordingly. I need to care for bodies because God cares about bodies. I need to care for creation because God cares about creation. Something new is emerging, yes, but it will not just emerge on its own. And I like Paul's image of giving birth. He says creation has been uh, groaning in labor pains. And not only creation, but also ourselves. Well, in my experience, having, having been present, uh, at the birth of my daughter. I understand that giving birth is really a team effort. We had Michelle there, of course, um, but we also had trained professionals who assisted in the process. 
My mother-in-law was there praying and encouraging us through the whole thing. And I was there praying and holding my wife's hand. Or maybe she was holding my hand. I was really scared. But it was a team effort. Of course, we all had different roles. But it was, all, it was important that we all were there, making sure that it went well, doing our part. And friends, as we consider this process of something new emerging, as we hope for renewal, as we hope for healing and salvation, Friends, we've got to take action and do our part. So let us be hopeful. But let us, be, let us work tirelessly to make this new reality happen. It begins with you, and it begins with me. God cares about bodies, and so should we. Let's wash our hands and wear our masks. Let's care for people and reach out. Let's care for the world. We are in debt. We have an obligation. So let us trust in God that he may give us the joy, the strength to do our part. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless me the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Before our Father's throne we pour our ardent prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims, our one, our comforts and our cares. We share each other's woes, our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other flows the sympathizing tear. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to be it again. Friends, thank you so much for joining us for today's service here at Prescott United Methodist Church. Uh, as we finish our service, I just want to do a, a, a little prayer for all of us. Um, may God continue to bless you. May God continue to keep you and give you strength. And may we continue to grow and be open to God's work. And we may be the church that we are called to be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And God will raise you up on eagles' wings.
I dreamed of a city called glory so bright and so fair when I entered the gate I cried holy the angels all met me I saw but I said I want to see Jesus he's the one who died for all then I bowed on my knees and cried holy 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 I clapped my hands and sang Son of God I thought as I entered that city my friends all knew me well they showed me the streets of heaven such scenes are too numerous to tell I saw Abraham Isaac and Jacob Mark, Luke, and Timothy, but I said, I want to see Jesus, he's the one who died for me, and I bowed on my knees and cried holy. sang glory, glory to the Son of God. Then I bowed on my knees and cried, Holy, Holy, Holy. I clapped my hands and sang glory, glory to the Son.